Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. These lines describe no individual, but the ideal king from the line of David. His charismatic gifts will make his kingdom one of justice and peace, standing as a signal that the whole world will share in his salvation. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be a belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young will lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp and the weaned child shall put his hand in the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. We will read responsibly from Psalm 72 found in your bulletin. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. The king rule your people righteously and the poor with justice. That the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds. 
and blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen, amen. Isaiah's theme of joyful anticipation finds an echo in our second reading as Paul reminds the church in Rome of the age-old encouragements of scripture. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In those days John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all of Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. 
But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for a baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Please be seated. (laughs) This one I always say, Merry Christmas, you brood of vipers. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) It's not Christmas yet. Happy Advent, you brood of vipers. John the Baptist, he's a very mysterious fellow, right? We don't really know too much about him. We know he lived in the wild, like Elijah before him. He preached in the wilderness against the status quo, and he was beheaded by King Herod. Spoiler alert, everybody. (laughs) Other than that, we're not 100% sure about this guy. You know, it's suggested that he's Jesus' cousin, the baby that Elizabeth was carrying when Mary went to visit her. You know, maybe. But we do know about John the Baptist is he was a very powerful preacher. People came from all over to hear him talk and to be baptized by him. Now traditionally, uh, back then, Gentiles would need to be baptized in the water and cleansed of sin to convert to Judaism. But most of these people today were already Jewish, so why are they getting baptized? That's a question. Why is John doing this? So here, John is proclaiming the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. And this Messiah brings along with him judgment, which is something that we often kind of gloss over when we talk about Jesus, right? We like prefer the, the guy with the sheep, the little lamb. But he has a winnowing fork, which is like a pitchfork, and he's going to separate that wheat from the chaff. So John is preparing the people for this coming judgment, and he does it with baptism. And then he says to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who were the religious leaders of the day, that they are vipers. They claim holiness because they descended from Abraham, but he's saying that isn't really enough. He roars at the people who are comfortable in their rituals. The good church folks, right? The ones who will go through the motions but have forgotten the wonder, the mystery, and the awe of God. Like Martin Luther said, good works do not make a man good, but a good man does good works. John sees this in the people, and so he orders them to repent. So when we say repentance, we think of Lent, right? Lent is that season of guilt and sin, right? Where we're supposed to have ashes and stuff? Not really. We're going to get to Lent eventually. So why are we talking about repentance here when we're trying to get to the joy of Christmas? It's hard 
for me to talk about repentance without sounding like I'm scolding you, right? I'm not. <laughs> repentance doesn't mean what we think it means now. In the Bible, when they talk about repenting, it isn't about just guilt of a wrongdoing and saying, I'm sorry. That's part of it. Repentance is about turning. The Hebrew root of the word is to turn. And the Greek root word, when it was translated to Greek, means change of mind. So it's a change of mind, a change of perspective at looking at how we do things and then trying a different thing, looking at the world in a different way. It's not all about guilt and sin. It can be. But repentance can also be joyful, if challenging, as well. God's righteousness is always present in the world, and it yearns to be revealed to us. But often it takes a change in ourselves in order to see it. Every week before we do the Eucharist, we have a confession that we say. If you really want to confess something big, you can come and confess privately. We do do that here. <laughs> but this communal confession, we say we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Does this mean that every week we did something incredibly terrible that we have to be sorry about? It's not necessarily true. When I was a teenager, I would read the things done and left undone, and the first thing I probably had was homework. <laughs> I apologize for not doing my homework. That was all I could think of, things done and left undone. But that's not what this is for. If we truly want to repent, it's about taking a look at our lives and taking a look at the world around us and thinking about how we can do something new and something good. Are our lives, as we live them now, aligned with God's intent, right? Intent for us and intent for the world. David Lowe says that repentance also underscores that change isn't necessary for change's sake, but rather that change is necessary because we've become aware that our actions are out of step with God's desire for peace and equity for all people and the whole creation. Repentance, in short, is realizing that God is pointing you one way and you've been traveling another way and changing your course. So this doesn't mean you've done anything bad, right? It just means that we've kind of lost the course. And now all this talk of sin and the angry shouting of John the Baptist seems a little bit out of place for Advent, but it really is not. Matt Skinner refers to John's brand of repentance as radically transforming the way of perceiving the world and comprehending God's place in it. Because that's what Christmas is. Keep in mind this thought as I read back to you John the Baptist's words. John says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. This is not hellfire, like we tend to think, right? This is the fire of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's fire, an unquenchable fire that is in all of us. When we get stuck in routine, the fire from Jesus can often grow dim and sometimes even go out completely. But if we repent, which is we turn towards God, change how we see things, our fire can grow and burn brighter. And this is what we should ponder in Advent. How can we prepare for the coming of Jesus and keep that fire going and growing? Expand it, not just keep it burning on a little, like, you know, coals, but make it bigger and brighter. Make it into an unquenchable inferno. Now, John's style of preaching can be somewhat off-putting today, especially to Episcopalians. But what he offers us today sounds like 
judgment and condemnation, but it's really not. It's a promise from God. A new Messiah is coming, and he will be different from anything the world has seen before. He will judge us, of course, but as Wesley Allen Jr. says, God's mercy and love are meaningless if God cannot choose to see us in our situations in different ways. To meet and to know Christ is to be judged and saved at the same time. The proper response is repentance. Repentance, love, mercy, grace, and judgment are all intertwined together in Jesus. And once we repent, which is to turn our lives towards the path that Jesus wants us to take, and away from the other path, the more destructive one, we can truly live out God's mission in the world. So that is really something that we should ponder in Advent. But also celebrate joyfully as we wait for Christ's birth. And as we realize that God is not some distant being who sits up on a cloud and looks down on us, right? But God did come down here to be one of us, to live as one of us and share in our life experiences and continues to do so via that Holy Spirit and that fire which is in each and every one of us, no matter how bright or dim it is. I think that's certainly a very joyful message we can have for Christmas, but not just Christmas, all the time. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please join me in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Hank, Peter, Bob, Mark, Pam, 
M.B., Marion, Clay, Kai, Frank, Mark, Michael, Kimberly, Tina, Carol, Sue D., Todd, Einstein, Danny M., Pamela, Nat and Nancy, Jude, Sue B., Elsie, Sue M., Sally, M.C., David, Jerry, Bruce, Pearl, Katie, James, Dawn, Macy, those suffering as a result of natural and human-made disasters, especially in areas of the southern U.S. devastated by multiple tornadoes, those injured due to gun violence, especially in Colorado Springs, and all those affected by COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, Bless, O Lord, physicians, nurses, first responders, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. We pray especially for Dr. Elizabeth Engelman, Dr. Dan Griffin, Dr. Esther E. Knapp, Dr. Rachel Simpson, Karen Liu, Eva Longmire, Brenda Marshall, Susan Dietz Massengill, Kate Cat Bates, Nor Noreen Aguera, and those responding to natural and human-made disasters. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for those who have perished so far in the war in Ukraine, those who died as a result of natural and human-made disasters, those killed as a result of gun violence, and the millions worldwide who have died from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. What we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> peace, peace, peace. Share the peace as you are comfortable. in trouble <laughs> without a cause hi everybody hi. hi dr nick okay um don't forget to come to coffee hour because it's awesome but also the kids are practicing for the christmas pageant which is going to be super awesome and you get to see a preview of what the stage looks like if you want um today is the last day of our adopt a family gift card donations. So for family 109, which is a mother and uh, her two daughters and uncle and their uncle. Um, so yeah, and if you are, don't have it today, you can ask Rhonda. I'm sure she can make a, well, I won't speak for Rhonda. So ask Rhonda about that. <laughs> so the coming up, since it's almost Christmas, it's still Advent, but it's almost Christmas. We will be having our Miracle of Christmas Orchestra. Yay! So if you play any instrument or have ever played an instrument in your life ever, talk to Rachel. I'm breaking out the trombone. It's not going to sound good, but it will sound. 
And that's all that God wants is a joyful noise. So uh, we're going to do that for Christmas Eve at 5. The midnight mass, so-called, is going to be at 10, not 10.30. 10 o'clock, slightly earlier for everyone, so you can go to bed earlier. <laughs> And on Christmas Day, we are having just one service at 10, which is a Sunday. So it's a Sunday with just one service at 10, but no music. But still come if you want. I'll be here. So I won't be alone. <laughs> um, on the 17th, in two weeks, we're having a caroling and potluck dinner party. Yay! It's going to be so fun. And if you're interested in caroling ahead of time, traveling to carol around, uh, talk to Rachel again. Hi, Rachel. If you have questions about the food or setting up or cleaning up, talk to Sue. Who's back there? Hi, Sue. Sue Maskell, thank you so much. Um, and it's a new event, but it's just going to be a fun time to get together and party and sing some carols. And I won't tell the liturgical police that we're singing Christmas carols before Christmas. <laughs> um, is there anything I forgot to announce? I'm picking up wreaths at coffee hour. Yes, thank you. Yes, wreaths. If you ordered a wreath, a, a live one, they're in the parish hall, so go over and pick it up. Um, there's a couple extras. I'm not sure how many extras. We have, but if you didn't order one, you could still have time to get one. They're $35. And they're pre-decorated, which I always appreciate because I'm not on top of things enough to have wreath decorations lying around my house. So. And one last shout out for pledges as we're doing our budgeting. Oh, yes. And if you haven't gotten your pledge card in and you still want to do that, please do so because we're going to have to have the budget done uh, by next week, the 14th. The 14th. Um, so hand that in if you forgot. And do we have birthdays or anniversaries today? Any birthdays back there on the computer? I got the no symbol. No anniversaries. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Gail. That's what I forgot. So Gail is just saying thank you to everyone who came yesterday to help decorate. It was the fastest decoration time we've ever had because we had so many awesome volunteers. So thank you so much. And many people who weren't scared of ladders. <laughs> I have vertigo, so that's why I don't go in the pulpit. It's too high. That's a joke. Okay, anyway. I'll, I'll stop with the terrible hacky comedy. And we'll continue on with our offertory. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God. Forest that stands alone, the bells of paradise, I heard them ring. It's covered all over with purple and pall, and I love my Lord Jesus above any. Jesus. 
dedicated to the glory of God, but also in loving memory of Martha Bendix by Matt Bendix, Carol Evelyn Google Fielding by the Fielding family, Richard Kwok and Dorothy Lamb by Rosetta and Bob Chow, and David and Marie Louisa York by the York family. We are very blessed with lots of love today in our flowers. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. Beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. 
When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you. We give thanks to you and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share in this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace and grant that we may find our inheritance with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Stephen, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep your peace. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
abundance you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation you have united us with Christ and one another you have made us one with all your people in heaven and earth now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior 
And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.